Hello and thank you very much for tuning in to another episode. This video will be a beginner's guide to using Gaia GPS. Have you tried using Gaia GPS? Have you failed miserably at getting it to work? Well, I've been there and I made this video to help. Let's start off with the most important thing you need to know. And that is you need to PAY in order to use it offline. Yes, that's correct. You have to pay for it to use it offline. That means if you want to use it for overlanding, hiking, or any other activity with no cell reception, then you need to pay. This isn't exactly clear to people. I tried using Gaia multiple times before I found out that I actually had to pay to download an offline map. So let's get into the three account types. A free account won't really do you too much. It's basically a terrible version of Google Maps. Your real choices are between member and premium. Personally, I chose premium. And to be honest, I don't use all those features. So if I could do it again, I would just choose membership. Everyone's different, so you actually might want premium. Just know that it's substantially more expensive. Oh, and Overland Bound has an awesome discount. Not gonna lie, I'm not even an Overland Bound member. Oh, hey, look, it's a Toyota Foreigner. All right, so now that we got the most important thing out of the way, let's continue on with the rest of the episode. There's two more important things I need to tell you about, and it's gonna take me three minutes to explain this, and it's gonna be really boring, so please bear with me. So, the second most important thing you need to know is in order to program your routes and plot your waypoints and all this other fancy stuff, you're going to need either a desktop computer or a laptop. You won't be able to make the most out of Gaia without one. The third most important thing about Gaia is that you have to program it. Let me log into my account to show you what I'm talking about. Do you see all those colored lines and icons? Well, I inputted all that. Now, just to remind you, the beauty of using Gaia GPS is that it's accessible offline. This is game changing for the outdoors enthusiast. I know some of you are absolutely terrified by that word program, or you have to make your own inputs, but let me show you how easy it is. Let's say we want to plot a course. To do this, click on the create route button, find the starting location on the map and then click a dot will appear and a dotted line. Now, if you make the endpoint part of the trail, right there, it's gonna automatically plot that route. You could also make manual entries where you just connect the dots to create the route. I won't get into all the features in this video. I actually won't get into all the features at all, but there are things like, let's say you you click the activity and make it driving. You'll notice that it's not gonna work on this trail. You have to select hiking. Hiking is the default, so just don't mess with that uh, selection. You're able to color your route. So let's say this was a difficult trail. I personally would choose the color red. You could come up with your own coloring system, but to me, red means difficult. I don't choose the color green because a lot of borders are that color. So I use bl multiple shades of blue. Light blue is going to be easy. A darker blue is going to be kind of between easy and moderate. And then orange is moderate, red's difficult, and black is impossible. Clicking on your route will give you trail data. You'll be able to visualize elevation, elevation gain, and distance. Now we're going to add a waypoint. So click on the add waypoint button, and then you'll drag it to the proper location and save and then you have a choice to choose an icon this is going to be the start of the trail so i'm going to choose the car icon and then i'm going to name the route accordingly in this case it'll be called clark summit there's an option to add notes now let's add a picnic spot so go ahead and click on the add a waypoint button again and save and then we're going to type in chill picnic spot and I'm going to choose the picnic table icon. So you'll see there's a whole bunch of icons here. You could use them for whatever you want. You don't exactly, you, you could use a table for, uh, I don't know, table store. Use your imagination. 
If you're still there, good job. Your attention span is greater than most. For the rest of the video, I'll be adventuring out in the Big Bear, California area. I am now going to show you how to use Gaia out in the field. Now that we've pre-mapped everything, we're ready to go further by finding new roads. This is the power of dreams, so let's go places. I also stumble across a trail that has a sticker that says Jeep Experience. Gee whiz, I wonder what's down this way. I didn't program it into my Gaia maps on my computer at home. So what could possibly go wrong? Stay tuned to find out. Oh yeah, there's one more thing we have to do before we head out. We have to download the map area on our phone or tablet. By the way, you can't download on your desktop computer or laptop. Kind of weird, right? There's two ways to download. You could either create an area and then download that created area, or just click on download map and choose a square. So right here is creating an area. Now, it co comes in a triangle. Actually, if you use a desktop, you could create more points and uh, create a more intricate shape. No matter what shape you create, it's just gonna download a box. So if you, like, let's say you make a big old uh, C and you're kind of hoping that uh, it won't save what's inside of the C, well, it's just gonna be a big old box. It makes no difference. So I would just use the download map feature. Find the area you want to download, resize the download area, at the top left of your mobile device, you can choose the fidelity. Also pay attention to max zoom and the file size. I find that the default max zoom of 16 or the highest of 17 is going to be optimal. If you're low on disk space, then I guess you could use one of the lower fidelity downloads. You're now ready to hit the save button. Name and save and if you want, add to a folder. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, just save it. All right, with the maps downloaded, we're ready to get on with the adventure. In this episode, I am joined by some friends I made on YouTube and Instagram. Okay, slow and then cut passenger. If you live out here on the west side or you're going to make your way out here, hit me up. If my ride looks a little flexier than usual, it's because I disconnected my rear sway bars. All it takes is about 30 seconds to loosen a bolt, unlink a sway bar, and strap it down. I have a video about this. Check it out here. Here's Scout Pass, and he did not disconnect his rear sway bars. And right there, you can see that his rear passenger tire is up in the air. A Toyota 4Runner already comes with flex. No disconnecting required. After 20 miles of trail driving, we're ready to set up for dinner. Tony is a Marine. Because once a Marine, always a Marine. <laughs> Only when he gets paid, all right. They made me a nice hamburger. Thank you to Tony. Once night fell, I decided I would camp out for the night and then do some exploring the following day. I thought this was a great opportunity to show you guys how to use Gaia in the field. Here's a Luna Life mattress. It's my trusty mattress that I've used on a number of trips. Material is very tough, so I've never had an issue with leaky air. There's my negative 25 degree sleeping bag right there. 
and uh, it's gonna be getting down at 39 degrees tonight. So. It got cold last night. I wanna say around 34 degrees, but my negative 25 degree sleeping bag kept me toasty. Okay, Gaia day two. Now you're gonna see this arrow moving around. So when I move my phone, this arrow is gonna move along with it. All right, now once I start driving, that arrow will lock in to the direction I'm driving to. And no longer will this phone be able to interact with how this uh, rotation of that arrow is. I know a lot of you are using either a smartphone or a tablet to use Gaia Maps. I tried that, but I found the display on my iPad mini was not bright enough. Also, the text was really small, the icons were small, it was just hard for me to read. So I do prefer Apple CarPlay. If you're using a phone or tablet, that's a great option. You have a lot more functionality built into your mobile device. All right, we're going to move along and I want to show you how to mark a waypoint on the fly. You can't do it through Apple CarPlay. This is to, uh, I don't like this, uh, this orientation. So I'm actually bearing south. I don't see anywhere on the screen that says south. That's not a good option. There should be some kind of like compass. Not good. I would never ever use that. So this button right here is to move the map. You move the map with the arrows. Not exactly intuitive. If I go over to Google Maps, I don't have reception, so it's gonna be low res. But you can see there, I could actually move this map around. So I'm hoping later down the road, Gaia will offer something like that. For right now, you can't. If you move on the screen, nothing happens. You can't even click on anything, really. Like on an icon, it doesn't do anything. So uh, plus and minus, This is I think this is the most useful uh, Apple CarPlay uh, function. I hit minus and I get a bigger view. That's very useful. I can see that there's a really difficult trail called the John Bull Trail right here. Uh, earlier I marked 3N54, which is a black diamond trail. I don't know what it's called yet. So later on when I get back to my computer, I could find out what it's called and I could. So after you zoom out, I think, uh, I think using these arrows now becomes a little more feasible, right? You'll notice there's a level like right here where the map becomes pretty sharp. I like the satellite map because I prefer the visual I get from it. So like I see this, I know that's Big Bear Lake. There's not too many functions on the Apple CarPlay. You have to actually use your phone. Okay, so I'm gonna get into Gaia Maps on my phone and let me go hit uh, this button right here to center me. Click that and it centers my location, okay? Now from here, like on the fly, I just have to make it like a quick stop. And then all I hit is plus right here, plus. And then I have an option to record track. That's, that's useful. I'm actually gonna start this right now. It's gonna drop breadcrumbs. So I'll know where I have driven. And then later on I could review the data, like uh, how fast I was going, the altitude, uh, elevation gains and so on. I'm gonna add a waypoint at my location. So yeah, I could add a waypoint and then select the location. Let me just show you how that how that looks. So you see, there's the waypoint and I could actually move it around. I could drop it right there. Okay, I, I actually don't like that. I don't wanna do that here. What I wanna do is I wanna hit plus and then I want to add a waypoint at my location. Okay, and then I get to choose a title. 
It uh, by default gives me a waypoint, the date, and the time. And um, I could leave it like that for now. And then I could actually choose the icon. And this is going to be a campground. There we go. So now it has an, a camping icon. Let me go ahead and save that. And then now I have dropped my waypoint. And then when I look at Apple CarPlay, and let's go zoom in, there is my new waypoint. And it's also dropping breadcrumbs, but it's wigging out because I'm around a bunch of trees. I make a right here, and now we get to explore this trail. So it looks like this is a nice place to camp. Yeah, definitely a camp spot right here. All right, so this trail's a bust. I cannot find any trail that resembles that. But at least I found a pretty cool camp spot right there, and it looks like there's a camp spot right there. I'm I'm happy I explored. We came here through here last night, and it wasn't that deep. Crossing. <laughs> it looks like there's supposed to be a trail right here. But it's a limited use to protect plants and animals. No motorized mechanical vehicles allowed, no target shooting allowed. So no bikes, no, it says no bicycles, no Jeeps. Um, basically what I need to do now is kind of mark this off that um, this trail is closed now. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, Oop, wrong phone, <laughs> my work phone. All right, so I'm gonna hit this uh, button to center us. There we go. I'm gonna add a waypoint, but I'm not gonna add it to my location because I want to move it just down here a little bit. There we go. And then I'm just gonna put save, and then I'm gonna hit save, and then we're gonna see this waypoint pop up on my screen right here. There we go. All right. So since that was closed and those trails right there, connect to each other. I'm assuming that this trail coming up is also going to be closed. But let's go see. Yep. So you see these rocks right here? <laughs> these boulders. They're blocking the trail now. I'm going to go ahead and hit change the icon. Let's go change it to a boulder. I know there's an icon for a rock. There it is. There's a boulder. <laughs> Boom. So there we go. So I've been here before and I already marked the Van Dusen cabin. And that's this right here. It's an old cabin. And you could have a picnic. Oh, we got people camping here, okay. Came across a trail that I have never been to. So let's go. Let's go. This is exactly what I wanted to do today. Get some exploration in. Got a little bit of the sniffles, so I'm sorry. It was a bit cold last night. I think the low was uh, 39. Right now it says 37. So yeah, it probably did get colder, right? Yeah. Hey, this is a this is a dope spot. So you can't quite see the lake from here, but it's a nice spot. Guess you could camp right here for one person or so. One or two cars could fit right there. Now this is getting really narrow. I'm already pinstriped, so could I really get more pinstriped? <laughs> so you'll see here, it gets a little chunky. <laughs> no worries, nothing this car can't handle. 
Yeah, this ground's not leveled. But if you climb up there, you might be able to see the lake. All right, so I'm trying to get to the pinnacles. Let's see, so there's another group site right there. Let's see, people camping over here. This is where like rock climbers go. There's a Prius, so a little proof right there that you can take a Prius up here. So if you're wondering if you can take a car over here, so there it is, Honda Civic with a spare tire on the front. This, I think, will lead to the Pinnacles hike, which I think will be pretty cool. Let's go. So it's getting a little, a little more rocky. I don't know, which side should I go? Suburban right there. In Gaia, this trail is marked, I believe, for hiking. I saw tire tracks, so I made my way on this trail. And I guess, sure enough, it, it is for, uh, for vehicles. Further south is an obstacle called the Squeeze. But of course, I didn't know this until after I got home and reviewed the trails that I drove through. The squeeze looked really tight, so when I came across this obstacle, I just turned around. Not even sure what uh, kind of trail this is, but screw it, let's go. Okay, I guess this is the Jeep experience? I don't know, I mean, if it gets rough, I'll just turn around like I did at the other spot. All right? All right. Uh, this is 3 and 10. It's close to the John Bull Trail, but um, I don't know. It, it, it was marked. I can't really see what it says, though. So we'll just drive through. It's not so bad, right? Let's go right here. Looks like a good way to go. There might be a little rock right here. All right, let's, uh, I guess, have the Jeep experience. See what's up. If the going gets rough, because I'm by myself, I'll turn around. If you're watching this video to learn about Gaia, this is pretty much the end of information that I'm gonna give you. So the next 10 minutes will be me finding my way on a Jeep trail because it was not pre-programmed. So far, this is a pretty nice trail. Not sure what's coming up though. Looks like it's a little chunky up there. If you look at that green arrow, that's where I'm located. And I was just trying to detour over to Highway 18. Gaia showed that there were trails that led there.
you pull over and drink some water. Looks like some people go to the left, but it's not marked on Gaia. Okay. Maybe this is like, this is where you turn around if you don't want to go through this, but it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't look too bad to me. This would be a good time for some B-roll. Oh my, pinstriped. Okay, I stop right here because the next part looks a little iffy for me. I think I could do it though, so I'm gonna go for it. But a lot of tree stumps, a lot of, these are definitely shelves. Let's see how it goes. This is a perfect example of what Gaia Maps won't do. It doesn't tell you trail difficulty out the box. You'll have to do research on your own or drive the trail on your own to find out its difficulty. Thank God for that front skid plate.
So quite honestly, I typically don't drive trails of this difficulty and uh, I never really had a two footed. So right here I'm actually trying to practice my two footing, kind of out of necessity, <laughs> right? But I'm a little herky jerky and uh, that's something that I definitely want to work on. I wasn't out looking for trouble. I just wanted to take a shortcut to Highway 18. It looks like it was just two miles away, rather than having a detour back down south for about a good 15 miles. Okay, next up, let's see. Yeah, you know what? I think if I was with other people, I would continue. But yeah, if by myself, I I don't want to. I don't think it's wise to continue. It's because it's just. Yeah, I could, I could, I could make it through this stuff, but I don't know when it's gonna end. I don't even have any traction boards, so I'm gonna head back. So that brings this episode to a close. To recap, Gaia Maps is not useful unless you pay for it and download the map. You'll need to plot your course on a desktop computer or a laptop. And lastly, you'll need to do your research and program the trails and their difficulties. So now that you know more about Gaia, what do you think about it? Are there any other map GPS applications that you're using? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Until next time, have fun on those adventures. Yeah, I can pass this rock. Okay. side screen. That sound good. Hopefully that was just my pinch weld. Uh, I hope it was. I think it's my, it sounded my, like my pinch weld. Like I was right on top of the pinch weld. But you never know.